How's it going, you spicy young individuals? Welcome to Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Travis Lang, and today we have an episode all about athletes who care. Today, I'm with Nick Gilmore, the senior here at IU East. Nick, uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Anderson, Indiana. So going to Anderson High School, what were you involved with? Um, I was involved in uh, multiple different sports. Um, I swam for three years, and I also did track for four years, and then my senior year, I ventured out and did cross country. So as you've transitioned to IU East, um, I know that you're working at the NX, is that correct? What yes. do you do at the NX? Um, I'm a community ambassador there, so I um, handle social media accounts and I help people through the application process and moving in and if they have any um, difficulties with anything, I'll resolve those. And uh, with that involvement, I also heard about there was a recent non-perishable canned food drive yep. going on at the Annex. Uh, tell me, how did you get involved with that? Um, so. Once or twice a semester, we like to do something that kind of helps the community. Um, in the past, we've gone to animal shelters. We've taken supplies to them, and we've helped clean and walk dogs and everything like that. Um, we kind of wanted to do something different this time, so we decided we wanted to do a canned food drive. Um, we're still deciding on where we're going to take the canned food, um, but it's just something we like to do as a company. Now, what, time, or what time period did that take place in? Um, we did donations this uh, the fall, or this past week, um, so we're planning on taking st the food probably Tuesday or Wednesday. But we are going to keep like a green bag outside of our doors, um, kind of keep the uh, it's kind of running, so anybody can bring it at any time, and we'll just continue giving um, canned food to that, like different organizations. I gotcha, and I mean I've organized a couple food drives in my time with student mm -hmm. council back in high school, but. What goes into organizing a food drive when it comes to having like a pickup location at the Annex? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is just getting the word out there so people know what's going on and where to drop off and what we're accepting. Um, along with the canned food though, we're taking like clothing donations too. So like if you've been meaning to take like a bag of clothes to Goodwill or something like that, you can bring them in and drop them off and we'll take them there as well. So we have uh, clothing donations, we've got food donations, and so the question is, why is it important to have it in the community? Um, it's just kind of we're in the Richmond community, so we want to help out as much as we can. We are an apartment complex, but we're also student housing, so we have a lot of students, and students can do a lot for the community to help out. And uh, speaking of students helping out in the community, I know that you are coming off of a conference championship in Discus. Yep. Uh, tell me about that. How, how <laughs> is it? Um, it was a real feeling. Um, I'd been training for it since freshman year. I'd had my sights set on it, and in the fifth round of the conference champion, I threw a throw and put me on top, and I held on to that. And it's just an amazing feeling that I finally reached that goal, and I have one more year to improve on it. Um, I'm definitely not the most athletic guy in the room, so tell me, what is the training like? I mean, you mentioned it was a tiny bit grueling, but what all goes into that? Um, it's pretty much year-round. Um, in the summer, it's a lot of weightlifting and a little bit of conditioning. And then when school starts, we start um, conditioning and weightlifting as well. And then once we get closer to the season, we get more um, event-focused. Um, so I'm not doing the running stuff anymore. I'm more lifting and doing technique drills with my feet and throwing shot put. And then when it gets closer to outdoor, I'm throwing discus more. Um, but it's just weightlifting and just technical stuff. And so with all that technical stuff you've learned in your time, I and mean, we're watching clips right now of you actually in competition, how has track and field influenced your life? Um, it actually got me to college. Um, a couple of my first choices that I wanted to go to, I didn't get accepted into. Um, so I started exploring the idea of collegiately throwing, and um, it got me to college, and it's been the best thing that I could have done. Being a student athlete, definitely helps out, it keeps you honest on your grades and everything like that. So now that you are going to IU East as a student, uh, first of all, what's your major right now? Um, I am a business marketing major with minors in entrepreneurship and sports marketing and management, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so as a career, looking forward ahead in the future, whether it might be um, after college, are you planning on going to graduate school? Uh, I've been kind of exploring the thought of it, but I'm not too sure on it yet. So with that, um, the question comes up, what type of future careers are you looking for? Um, 
my whole life's been revolved around sports, so I kind of want to stay within sports. I'd like to be around basketball just because it's kind of what I'm interested in, like marketing-wise. Um, so something in the sports field, just so it stays familiar and stays interesting. Do you have any advice for any future track players that either are in college and looking uh, to further their career or maybe in high school looking to continue it in college? Um, <clears throat> don't worry about division. It doesn't matter what division you go to. You can make big noise any school you go to. Um, you can run as fast as you can, throw as far as you want, jump as far as you can. It doesn't matter if you're D1 or if you're D3, NAI, anything like that. Um, just get somewhere and just being a student athlete will help you tremendously. And finally, is there just any, any comments you have or any advice you'd like to take away from either playing the food drive or just uh, being in track in general? Um, I just would say try to be involved in as much as you can. Get the most out of your college experience when you're um, doing it because when you're done, you, you're going to look back on it and you're going to want to make sure you did the most you could. And so with that, we have Nick Gilmore here as our first interview, the conference discus thrower uh, for our IU East team. Look for him as he continues his career here as the senior of IU East, and also keep an eye out for some of those food drives going on at the index. We have more athletes coming up. Don't go anywhere. Today. My throat's been hurting all day and I have class in an hour. Okay, let's get you feeling better. Receive quality care without the wait. Read Health Now right beside you. Hi, how can I help you? My daughter has a fever and she isn't feeling well. Okay, let's get her feeling better. Receive quality care within the comfort of your own home. Read Health Now right beside you. What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone, caller ID on your TV, and even text messaging, all for a low price. Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Almost done. Now you can pay your bill, manage your appointments, and check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account, available on any device. I have had the pleasure of taking care of probably 35,000 cataract patients. It really is meaningful to people. It changes their lives. It gives them back things that, that they hold dear. It seems like you can't do anything without proper banking help. And I've had a very good experience working with First Bank. You have people that you know and you grow a relationship with. I just have the confidence that the banking part of it will be okay. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're on the episode of Athletes Who Care, a quick little segment to where we can showcase some athletes in the IUE's community and what they've been doing uh, for the nation. And so today I have two amazing people with me. It's Addie Brown and Bree Gray. They're on the basketball team of IU East. Uh, first of all, let's start with where you guys are from. Addie, where are you, where are you from? I'm from Oxford, Ohio, um, but my parents just recently moved to Indianapolis. And Bree? I'm from Willing, West Virginia. So give me a quick insight onto your guys' history with basketball. Uh, Addie, when did you start playing basketball? Since I could walk and talk. Um, I don't remember the first time, but probably five or six years old. Um, my, coach, uh, my coach usually was my dad, so that was always fun, having him coach me and my brothers played as well. So we always grew up playing, playing sports, especially basketball. Um, I've been playing since the third grade on and off, but I'd say consistently since middle school. So. And so with the backgrounds in basketball that you guys have, how did you end up meeting? 
here. Yeah. <laughs> we met yeah. for the first time um, in July of our freshman year when we um, came to do workouts and kind of team bonding stuff. So, yeah. So with that transition from high school to college ball, you guys met each other, obviously. But what's the transition like? Um, I'd say it's a lot faster. It's a lot different. Um, the work you have to put in is a lot more than high school or anything else we've ever experienced before. Um, it's just a lot more serious. Um, it's like a full-time job. And there's also so many more games. I feel like we played 30 yeah. plus, and in high school we played, I played like 20 max games. Yeah. So you have to take care of your body and um, yeah, it's just a lot harder work. It's a full-time <laughs> job for yeah. sure. And with that as insane amount of uh, games coming up and also the grueling practices, what's an average practice like for the women's basketball team? It's a good question. Yeah, um, they're pretty tough. I mean, the goal is to make practice harder than a game, so it makes a game seem easy. Um, so uh, we haven't started practice yet, so it's hard to say what it really looks like yet, but I'd say that's pretty much the point. Yeah, I feel like um, we always want it to be game speed so that, like Bree said, it's easier than a game because games should be fun. Practice should not be as fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just working as hard as we can so that we can see results on the court in real games. And uh, remind me, when's the first actual basketball game for the women's team? November 1st, yeah. I believe. November 1st. So coming up. So you guys have... Uh, Maybe not too much time left, um, but it's definitely on the horizon. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> we got to kick it into gear. Yeah. So after that, let's take the clock a little bit back. So let's go to the summer. I heard you guys were both on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where'd you guys go? Uh, we went to Puerto Rico this summer. Uh, and what were you guys doing there in Puerto Rico? So we were on a basketball tour um, with a ministry called Athletes in Action. Um, do you want to explain what that is a little bit? <laughs> um, so Athletes in Action is basically a global ministry, and their goal is to have a Christian athlete on every team in every sport in every nation. Yeah, so we um, brought a bunch of athletes from different universities together, and we created a team. And then we got to play Puerto Rican teams um, and also share our testimony with them, which is just a quick story of how we came to know Christ um, and get to know them and interact with them, which was really cool. So besides playing the games against the Puerto Rican teams and forming the team, uh, what else did you have to do there? You got it. <laughs> um, so we shared our testimonies, which I kind of mentioned, and we kind of talked to them after our games. And so something that was one of my favorite parts was we music and dancing was something that always brought the two cultures together so we would play music and just they'd teach us some of their dances and we'd te we'd teach them some of our dances which was really cool um we also do you want to talk about the kids camp yeah so we uh got to visit a i think it was an elementary school yeah. and so we kind of split them up into boys and girls and it was kind of cool um because we really got to see their culture um, so what we did with the boys is we kind of taught them how to play basketball and like we played a little bit of one-on-one -on -one with them which was really fun um, and then the girls did a lot of dancing and singing yeah. um, they actually had this whole routine planned out and they did it for us multiple times and then like taught it to us and it was really cool um, just to kind of see what they're about and see what their culture is like yeah. uh, you guys mentioned culture and music as being one of the connecting factors in this but what are the differences between the mainland US and Puerto Rico they're pretty similar. Um, obviously, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory, so there's a lot of like restaurants that are similar um, in the states and in Puerto Rico. Um, I'd say they're a lot like nicer and friendly. Like anyone will look you in the eye, smile, say hello. Um, they love us from the states, and they are so passionate about their island as well. They could go on and on about how much they love their island. Yeah. So. So let's start with Bree. What was your biggest takeaway from this mission trip? Um, I'd go back to testimonies. Um, I'd say I never really knew what the importance was in sharing my story and how I came to know Christ. Um, but in doing that, I realized how easy it is for people to relate to that and how important it is to get the gospel out. So I'd say that was my biggest takeaway. Addy, what was your takeaway? There were a lot, but I think the biggest thing was I don't want there to be um, something as simple as language that stops me from being able to 
share my love for Christ. Um, so at, at times I was nervous to speak to these Puerto Ricans because I don't know Spanish um, and a lot of them don't know English. So I feel like I want to learn their language so that I don't have to um, use that as an excuse for not speaking to them. Uh, when it comes to um, basically, if you ever got the chance to go on another mission trip anywhere in the world, I'm saying anywhere, where would you pick to go? Oh, um, I don't know. That's I tough. Think I know. Yeah. I think I'd go to East Asia. Um, I know some friends that are actually there right now that are going to be living there for a few months. Um, and I just think that would be such a culture shock and um, super out of my comfort zone, which would be challenging, but also really exciting, I think. Yeah, honestly, just anywhere outside of the U.S. I think would be really cool to just experience that same, like you said, like a culture shock, kind of like um, just getting to learn more about other cultures like we did in Puerto Rico. And finally, Addy, let's start with you. Any other tips you have or any excitement you have for either basketball or the mission trip? Um, I'd say when it comes to mission trips, I think just like going out and helping people, whether it has to do with your faith or not, I think is extremely important because you learn like different cultures and like what people need and it, it makes you um, just experience joy in helping people in um, a greater way than I ever had before. So. Agree. Uh, I think something big is learning how to use basketball as a gateway to sharing the gospel and talking about Jesus and sharing his love. So I think that's a big takeaway and something that I can definitely try and do in the future. Um, so, yeah. And with that, that's been Addie Brown and Bree Gray here, uh, basketball players for the Ivy East women's team. Be sure to catch them on November 1st as they play their first game. But also keep in mind uh, some of the opportunities with mission trips that are going on uh, in this IU East community. Don't go anywhere. We still have more interviews coming up next. IU East has a beautiful campus. We're in Richmond. We're located on the northern side of town on about 180 beautiful acres. We have five buildings. The first one was Whitewater Hall. That was built in 1974. And most recently, we've added our fifth building, which is the Student Events and Activity Center. And that opened in 2016. I think one of the things that often folks don't realize, we have 3,700 students here. Our campus is really split in a way. We have about half of those students are traditional age uh, students who are coming right out of high school and they're doing all of those typical things that you know, college-age students do. And then we have this other aspect of our campus that's online and that's, that serves about a half of our students as well. And so we're able to serve both of these groups in a really great way. We are an Indiana University campus right here in Richmond so students can get an IU degree in their region. An IU East degree holds just as much weight as a degree from IU Bloomington does, except you're getting a degree at a fraction of the cost as you would at a different campus. So I'm able to graduate debt-free in May and that's something that a lot of students aren't able to say. We have a small enough campus that students will really get to know their faculty and their faculty will get to know them, yet it's large enough so that we have a full campus life and students get the full college experience. This campus can be everything that you want it to be. If you just want to come and go to class, you can do that. But if you want to be somebody who is out in front and leading and noticed, you're going to get that chance. And that doesn't happen everywhere. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching the episode Athletes Who Care, a tiny little segment where we um, basically we give some time to our student athletes here and just showcase what they're doing in the community to help better it. And so today, right now, I am with Andrea Hernandez. Uh, she is a junior 
at IU East. And so, Andrea, where are you from? I am from Puerto Rico. I lived in Florida for about two years before I moved to Richmond. Um, coming from Puerto Rico, it's a very big difference between Puerto Rico and the Midwest because um, over here it's really cold and I had never been in winter or anything before I moved here, but I'm glad I came from a little island. Um, where I come from really means a lot to me, so yeah. And with that, do you have any fond memories of your time in Puerto Rico? Well, um, there was always something to do in Puerto Rico that's basically just different. And so um, the beach was something that I was always enjoy. Um, being with my family was something that definitely is something that really shaped me into being the person I am today. And I, one of my fondest memories is just every Sunday we would go to my grandparents' house and just spend time with them. And my grandma is always like, She's always doing something, and she's always really hyper, kind of like me, but um, she would always have something to do, and she would always want to do something, whether it was working in her garden or just going out to eat or just going to the beach. And my fondest memories are always with my family, so, yeah. And with that culture as well, has there been any Spanish influence that's uh, transitioned over? Well, um, in relating to Spanish, um, over here in the Midwest, there's not a lot of people who speak Spanish, <laughs> definitely. So it's kind of like different, and the language barrier is definitely something that I did notice, and the culture shock, because over there, we're really familiar, really homey. There's always something to do. Um, your family is everything. And so over here, it was kind of hard to move over here just because I was away from my family, and just everything is different, a different language. Um, and even though I was raised speaking both Spanish and English, it was something that I feel like really influenced and in just like me coming over here and just my life as a whole. So yeah. Speaking of that language barrier, mm -hmm. I heard you went to an entirely different continent over the yeah. summer. Uh, where were you? Yeah, so I went on a two month and a half internship to Ecuador and Peru. And so it was with a nonprofit organization called MedLife and they basically focus on medicine, education and development for low income families. And so we went to local communities. There's a community called um, Pamplona, which is a really um, poor community in Peru. And what's crazy about it is that it's 45 minutes away from Lima, which is the biggest city. And people who are from Lima itself or Peru itself doesn't know that Pamplona exists or that people are in need. And so I went over there and to be a part of this team that basically we, we went to night meetings to listen out to the communities. We built staircases for better access. We visited um, water reservoirs because water is a really big need over there just because it's not like over here we can drink, drink tap water, but over there if you do that um, you might get infected with parasites or it's just they have so many needs and we just went over there to be able to just give them some relief into that. We build them homes, staircases like I said, and um, we taught kids English just because I feel like education is the biggest part of a person's like growth and development just because with education you can do so much and education in a way is a way out of poverty. So once you educate yourself and once you, once you learn more and gain more knowledge, you're able to do so much more in life than when you didn't. So we went over there and we designed English classes for little kids, which was cool because they would be so engaged and they would be so happy about like learning this new language for them. And it was just amazing and yeah. Along with your amazing influences in uh, Peru and Ecuador, you're also a manager for the women's soccer team. How yeah. did you get on uh, on the team? Well, my best friend, um, Anjali, she plays soccer and she's played soccer her whole life. And so we've basically been raised together ever since we were like three or four. And so soccer has been her life. And I was kind of more like a water polo, wa like swimming girl. And so she made me join soccer once, which was kind of funny because I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the girls can tell you that because I kick a ball and it's kind of funny. But um, she, uh, got recruited by Shane to be on the team and she told me about it. She was like, oh, um, let's go to uh, Indiana. And I was like, oh, well, Indiana, like it was never in my mind. Yeah. And so, but I feel like God always has a purpose and God always will lead the way to you and you just have to, 
you know, just follow what he says. And um, that was kind of it for me. Um, I got to talk to Shane. He was like, you should come over here. It's a first year program. Um, I think you'd be perfect for it because I love talking. So, and he told me, he was like, you should come and try it out and see. And I was like, well, I don't know. Cause I still wasn't sure. Cause Indiana is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So I was just like, not sure about it, but then I came to visit and I was, um, everyone's super friendly. I met, Angela was one of the first people I met and she was super nice to me and everyone was super nice to me and just everyone made me feel at home. And some, that's something that's really important for me, just feeling at home, just because I am so far away from home that being at home is something really important to me, especially with having my family away. So. That's just kind of how it ended up for me, and I was just, I loved it here. And it's a small school, which is something that I also wanted. And well, yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so because you you feel more at home, and you want to give back to your home in a mm -hmm. sense, I've heard you want to start a, a new service club at IU East. Yeah. So actually, with the same nonprofit organization that I work with in the summer, um, they're nationwide. So. Um, a lot of schools all over the U.S. and there's some in Canada and the U.K. and other places around the world that have chapters. It's called the MedLife Chapter and it's basically focusing on what the organization's mission and vision is. So providing medicine, education, and development for low-income families everywhere. It's an acronym so <laughs> if you see it you'll know what I'm talking about. And um, basically, I just wanted to bring it to IU East because I feel like there's so much that needs to be done, not only like locally, but globally. And I want people to be able to experience what I experienced in the summer. And I also went last year to a trip, a service learning trip. Uh, it was a week long, but it was something that I gained a lot from. And I know that giving back to people is something that's really important and dear to my heart. So I want people to be able to experience that and people to be able to like be able to engage in their community communities as much as they can and just bringing like volunteers from like, Indiana to Peru or just from Indiana to Indiana just itself is something really important and I think that everybody should like be aware of that not only like places abroad need our help like our own communities sometimes need our help too and so that's what I wanted to get across with bringing that MedLife chapter over here. Now that you've been trying to bring this MedLife chapter over mm -hmm. Have you started advertising at Yes, all? actually, we have a social media, and Anjali Luna, which is my best friend, she also, she's the one in charge of it. She's a communications major, so she's perfect for that. She's a social media girl, and um, our Instagram is medlife at IU East, so if anyone can follow us, that'd be great. <laughs> um, we're working towards having our first meeting and everything. Everything's already practically set. We just have to do some finishing touches, and... It'll be starting off and advertising. We had a table in the student organization fair, which we got a lot of engagement from. A lot of people did come and they were really interested in it. So I'm excited for what's to come. And there you have it. This is Andrea Hernandez, uh, the junior at IUE. She's on the women's soccer team as a manager, but she's also been doing great things in Peru and Ecuador. Be sure to follow that new service club coming up on social media. And that will close it out for this show. You're watching Inside IUE Sports here on the Red Wolf Sports Network. We'll see you next week.